Oops, I'm forgetting my notes someplace. All right. And uh, I think we're getting feedback through the something or other here. We're trying to, there we go. I think that's better. All right. And hopefully we're still live online. Anyway, good morning and welcome to the worship service here at the Bonner Springs United Methodist Church. We welcome each and every one of you, those of you who are present here in the sanctuary, and those who are with us live on the Facebook uh, live video this morning as well. Uh, I'm Charles Grant. I'm the pastor of congregational care here at the Bonner Springs United Methodist Church. And Andy, as he begins his message today, will explain why he is not here in person to welcome you. Uh, one announcement I want to make this coming Wednesday is Veterans Day. Usually at our worship services, we have a very special video that uh, lifts up our veterans and our congregation. And so we're hoping to put that on Facebook on Wednesday of this week, which is Veterans Day. So be watching Facebook for that deal. All right. And I think, uh, as one of our late night shows say, um, we have Andy's message, which is going to be live via pre-recorded video. Does that make sense? <laughs> Nope, it doesn't. But anyway, okay. Are we ready to go with that, Hannah? All right. And here's Andy. Hey, friends, and welcome. Uh, it's so good to see you. Uh, this is kind of a strange thing we've got going on today. I I've never preached a sermon from my bedroom before. Look, there's uh, cute little interruptions all around. This is uh, Voldemort, <laughs> named by my uh, three-year-old Mr. Theo. Uh so uh, I we are coming from you different today, and with good reason. So um, my wife, Catherine, you guys know her, one of the pastors at the church. Uh, her dad had tested positive for COVID, and so uh, we are isolating because we spent a little time around him. Uh, also, Catherine has not been feeling all that great herself. Uh, she's going to get COVID tested, but uh, probably not that. But uh, we're just being extra cautious and staying at home today. But uh, it's so good to be able to be with you uh, through through the through the marvels of technology. Technology. Uh, I can sit in my own bedroom and I can and I can preach to you a sermon. So uh, it will be a little different today. It, it'll be informal. Um, I'm just going to kind of talk to you about what's on my heart. Uh, it's not as scripted as normal, uh, but I hope it will still be a blessing to you. Um, first off, I'm going to start uh, reading our scripture today. It's from uh, Matthew uh, chapter six, and I'm just going to skip around a little bit in it to uh, to, to hit the high points. So, um, all right. It says, stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them, and where thieves can break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat them, and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Let me skip down a little bit. Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. You guys ever feel like that? <laughs> uh, that uh, that maybe we uh, tomorrow might bring enough of its own trouble, so we can just kind of chill and uh, and and be present in today. Um, that's I think that's been a lot of people um, this week and this season of life. Uh, it's hard not to live into the future. It's hard not to. Uh, it's hard not to think about what will come. Uh, all the different things we're worried about. Uh, before uh, most of us knew somebody with a case of COVID, uh, we already we already felt that mortal fear in us, right? Um, 
In the same way, uh, I have heard so much fear coming from people on both sides uh, in this election season about uh, the possibility of unrest, and unrest in a way that we've never seen it in our lives. Um, it's worry, right? We have these worries. We're thinking about it. And uh, this passage in the Bible, it's in Matthew 6, it's a part of, uh, it's a part of um, the Sermon on the Mount, which is about the best sermon that's ever been preached in, in my estimation. It's uh, how Jesus started his public ministry. And, uh, and he gives us a lot of those reminders uh, of just like, hey, look, this is what it means to seek the kingdom of God. And this is a reminder here that is, I think, uh, especially poignant today uh, as we're thinking about this, as we're thinking about uh, wholeness, which is what this whole sermon series has been about. Uh, but today we're talking specifically about wholeness in our relationship with God. And I think one of the things that has the potential to steal that is us just not being present in the moment that God has given us right now, right? That's a huge thing. That's a huge thing in our faith and in our spirituality is having the presence of mind just to sit and to be. So uh, I, it's uh, it's not traditional, uh, but what I, I think we can do for a little while, uh, even during the sermon, is to take just a few minutes here, uh, a few minutes to center, a few minutes to, to just be still and know that God is God, uh, to reconnect with ourselves, uh, to reconnect with who God has called us to be, and uh, and just so you know, as a, as, an, as a way of orientation on this, it's like, just sit and be. You know, even if it, like, repeat a single phrase, something like, um, God, I love you, or uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Just say something like, God's kingdom first, or, or God be with me, or something like that. So I'm going to invite you to take just a moment here. Take a couple of deep breaths with me. Uh, and just be still. Just be still and know that God is God. You know, that might seem like uh, a relatively simple enough thing. It might not seem all that important. Um, but being able to take those moments and and really center and, and invite God into our lives, that's not a minor thing. That's not nothing. In fact, I think that's something that uh, is, is often overlooked, but I think that's essential for us to do right now. For us to ask God to give us some perspective on things. You know, it's interesting, um, over this last week, um, I've seen some argument on social media. I know I'm surprised by that. I've never seen any argument on social media before. How about you guys? <laughs> but I've seen some back and forth, uh, and, and the argument goes something like this. The argument goes something like, there's a group of people saying, oh, whoever wins, whoever wins the election, God is still on the throne. God is still in control. Um, and then, and then that got some backlash, <laughs> uh, and and it, it got backlash by really good people, uh, people I know and love, uh, some of my colleagues, and uh, and people who I respect their opinion a lot, and, and who truly can see farther than me uh, in some ways. Uh, and the backlash was something along these lines. It's like, well, no, it matters who won. It matters who won, right? Uh, because it matters who wins this election because we have to be people who fight for justice in this life. And yes, yes, of course we do. We have to be people who fight for justice. Um, but for me, my mind is always orienting on, on what does that justice look like? What does that justice look like? And, what, and what's our role to play in it? I think that a lot of the times, um, because of because of our political ideologies getting conflated with our religious ideologies, uh, the two have the potential to become one in our mind, right? And I think this is a good time to untie those things, to work on that, because our faith is more than a political ideology. It's something that calls those things into account. And taking the time to say, you know what, I am going to put a considerable amount of care into 
how I how I vote, right? I'm going to look at policies. I'm going to ask uh, which of these policies make uh, our world better reflect God's kingdom, and and I think there are good faith arguments to be made for both policies and the Republican platform and the Democrat platform ushering in God's kingdom in different ways. I, I believe that in my heart. <laughs> I know that you guys have heard me preach about politics enough before that hopefully hopefully you know that's my heart on it, but. Our work is to try to discern uh, which of those two for us, in our conscience, uh, where do we believe God is calling us, uh, which of these things in this binary system where we can only pick one, which of these two will better usher in God's kingdom. And that's not for me to decide for you, not at all, right? Most of us probably voted this week, and, and we might have voted differently, and that's okay, right? We're still God's kingdom. Uh, but after we vote, <laughs> right? It's good to know our limits, both as just people, as human beings, as individuals, and as people within a greater social system, right? Asking ourselves, how can we do the most good? Uh, how can we avoid harm? And saying like, hey, listen, if I voted, right? And I, and I did my best to, to vote my conscience, is that the end of what I do? No, we still fight on a policy level for what we think is right through the proper channels right that's a good thing uh, don't give up on your ideals and what god has called you to and if god has called you to just take a break from it right now i understand that too but then but then we go a little deeper right and we say outside of policy outside of policy which is important how can we as individuals and importantly as the church how can we usher in the kingdom of god right because our resources do not end in our one vote out of tens of millions of votes. That's not where our resources end. Our resources don't end there. We have our time. We've got our hands that we can put to work. We've got our hearts that we can make malleable. Uh, we can open them to God and let God call us. We've got our, we, we, we've got our, our gifts. We've got our money. Uh, we've got the things that God has given us that we can bring together and offer our world justice, that we can. That's for us, right? That's not something we have to rely on the other tens of millions of people. That's something that God has called us to. And that's something that God has called our church to together, which I think is pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible to be called by the Most High God, right? <laughs> to say like, hey, you guys are here and, and I love you, and and don't get so stuck on the things that are happening out there because God is calling you to live your life right here, to fight for justice right here in our community, right? God has a call for us, which is so, so cool. And so what can we, what can we do? We can stand together, right? We need our Christian unity. I know you've heard me say it so many times, but I do think when we're talking about our wholeness and relationship with God in this world, it's like what we need is we need to stand together in God's love. It is bigger than a party voting this way or that way. And no, that doesn't mean the policies are important. It doesn't mean that reasonable people can't disagree. They can. But... What we are called to is we're called to stack hands. We're called to be together. We're called to love boldly together. So that's my invitation to us. That's my invitation to us this week. As I think back about this week, later on in my life, I hope the things that I remember, not even necessarily who won the election or how or why, but the different ways I saw God show up in the process. And I did. I really saw God show up in the process. Now, many of you guys joined us or caught it online. Um, we had it on our Facebook and YouTube. I, I encourage you guys to go watch it. Uh, Monday, the day before election, uh, the election, we had the Bonner, the Bonner Springs Ministerial Fellowship uh, hosted uh, a really cool event called the Election Eve Service of Unity. We came together. We sang together. We were at a polling place at, at, the, at the Bonner Springs YMCA in the parking lot there. And we just invited God to be a part of our lives. It was people from different races, people from different political affiliations, people who just stood there and asked God to show up, who asked God's kingdom to be present on earth here. The next day, I stood 
uh, at the plaza with a group of faith leaders, clergy people from all over the Kansas City metro. And we stood and said, no matter what happens in the election outcome, because we were still several days away from knowing at that point, let's react in a loving way that's not violent. We were calling people, uh, you know, to, to say like, hey, listen, this is a part of the game that we're all playing together, right? This democracy thing. Uh, and what we have is what we have. That's what we can bring, okay? So if it doesn't go the way that we were hoping, then we're not going to be violent. We're going to be loving, right? The day after the election, I found myself sharing, sharing meals with, breaking bread with, spending hours with people who probably didn't vote the same as me, right? That's significant. The day after it, and you know what I did? I had a great time with those people. We were able to just be together in Christian community. And that's okay. No, that's more than okay. That's good. Because God has knit us together for such a time as this. We need to cross those lines right now. To be present with each other. That is how we're going to heal the world right now. And that's how we are going to commune with a God who has put God's image in all of us right because when we fail to see that when we fail to see that god has called that other person just as much as god has called us that yes that they're narrow-minded sometimes and yes oh yes that we are too if we're missing out on that we're missing out on seeing who god is so i invite you over this next week what to do first just take time just center yourselves. Just be present with God. Take even a five-minute stretch a couple of times a day to just sit and be still. To invite God into your life. To open your hands and say, God, whatever it is that you're calling me to right now, I want to go there. God, whatever it is in, my own, in the life of my own mind that I need to set aside right now, that I just need to dial down the, the, the volume on a little bit so that I can see my neighbors as your children. God, help me to do that. God, center me on what matters most. Take away my worry about tomorrow and just let me be present with you, God. Let me be present with your children who you've called me to be in relationship with. I invite you to do that this week. And then take the time you know, anybody who talks too much about politics on your Facebook newsfeed, just mute them from your feed for 30 days. Better yet, take a break from Facebook and other social media. It's not bringing out our best urges right now as people. It's not. So take the time to, to, to actively disentangle yourself from the things that are getting in the way right now. That's hugely important. Just take away the distractions, the things that are getting in the way of seeing God's kingdom, the things that are making you worry, the things that are pressing in from every side and making you feel suffocated. Just, just get away from them for a little while and just be still and know that God is God. And then connect with people. Just connect with people. People that voted like you, but also people that didn't vote like you. Break down the echo chambers and listen for God's voice in unexpected places because God's voice always comes from the margins and the places we expect at the very least. So, my friends, uh, at the end of the day, remember that I love you, that God is calling you to wholeness right now in relationship with God. And a huge part of that is calling us to uh, to, to connection with the others of the body of Christ and the others in our community. This is what that wholeness looks like. So I invite you to seek first God's kingdom. Not the kingdom we're trying to build on here. A kingdom where moth and rust destroy, where thieves can break in and steal. Our hope is not in those things. Our hope is in God. A God who died for us. A God who loves us. A God who is on the throne and will be on the throne no matter what. A God who's seen us through as a people, as God's people and as humanity through so many things. A God who's present now and who's calling us, 
who is calling us to be centered on God's love, to find that in ourselves, to find that peace, and to share it with all we meet. That's my word for you today. Brothers and sisters, I love you. It's so good to see you, and we will come together again soon. Bye. Okay, and... Yep. Welcome back to the service here in the sanctuary at this time. And I think we're going to change our order around just a little bit. We're going to go into our spatial music. And I've got one song on here. Um, and I think it's a different song that we've got on our tape over here, um, which is Ray Bush and Joe Kinsey are uh, singing a song. <laughs> Let's go with that.
Thank you very much, Ray and Joe, for that wonderful, wonderful music. That's one of my favorite songs. How could I forget the name of that? All righty. And if you want to hear that song again, it will be one of the links that are listed with our Facebook Live um, service that you can go back and watch if you want to watch this again online. There's also other links there. And one of the important links is for giving. Those of you who are here in the sanctuary as you leave this morning, there's an offering plate on a, a little table back there at the back for you to leave your offerings. And if you're watching live online, there is a link over in the comments section there that you can uh, uh, click on and go to that and be able to give to the church and keep all of our ministries that are so vital at this special time of the year going throughout the year. Also, there'll be links there for the children's message, and I'm not sure what all else will be there, but there'll be several links. Go over there and find out what all those links are. All righty. Okay, also there's uh, listed in the comments section of the uh, live video feed are the prayer concerns for today. Um, for you here in the sanctuary, I think you've already heard some of the major ones, um, and you can go on, go on to Facebook and find the other ones there. I didn't happen to bring. I have some computer problems this morning, so I don't have the list over here with me at this time. But let us take the, our prayer concern to Almighty God in a special time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you, lifting up all the hurts, all the problems, all the joys that we are experiencing in our life. This past week, there's a whole lot of them from both of the ends of the spectrum. We rejoice that so many people took advantage of the opportunity to express their votes. We rejoice that we had a successful prayer meeting on Monday night for unity in Christ's love. But we pray for those who are suffering from this terrible pandemic from COVID-19 and from other diseases as well. We pray that you will reach out with your healing power and touch each and every person. We pray for healing throughout our nation as we are indeed a divided nation. We pray that you will walk with us and that we will walk with you more importantly and seek your guidance in all that we do. We pray for each person that needs our prayers today throughout this world. Surround us with your love. Lift us up. Help us hold Christ central in our lives and his love central in our lives. We give you thanks. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. My battery is beginning to give out in my microphone here, so <laughs> it's blinking on me. Again, we thank you for coming today, and uh, as we re remind you, please let Jeff dismiss you as we are leaving this morning here in the sanctuary for you at home. Uh, we wish you a good day, uh, and may God bless each and every one of you.